APCO Educational Topic 15, Ectopic Pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancies are abnormal implantations outside of the endometrial cavity. They account for 1.5% of reported pregnancies in the United States. 98% of ectopic pregnancies are in the fallopian tube. 70 to 80% are located in the ampullary portion of the tube. Less common locations include the ovary, cervix, and abdomen. Ectopic pregnancy is a leading cause of maternal morbidity and mortality. Early diagnosis and management may prevent serious adverse outcomes and preserve future fertility. The objectives of this video are to 1. Develop a differential diagnosis for bleeding and abdominal pain in the first trimester. 2. List risk factors for ectopic pregnancy. 3. Describe the diagnosis and treatment for ectopic pregnancy. When a patient presents with first trimester vaginal bleeding and abdominal pain, it is essential to determine the location of the pregnancy. This could be a non-viable intrauterine pregnancy that could be either a spontaneous abortion or a molar pregnancy, or this could still be a viable intrauterine pregnancy with physiologic implantation bleeding or a subchorionic hemorrhage. It is very important to consider ectopic pregnancy as a possible cause, for missing an ectopic pregnancy can lead to maternal morbidity and mortality. Let's discuss ectopic pregnancy risk factors. As we discussed earlier, 98% of ectopic pregnancies are located in the fallopian tube. Here's a nice and normal fallopian tube. What risk factors would result in this fallopian tube becoming scarred and damaged like this illustration here? Having a history of an ectopic pregnancy would be the highest risk factor. Any other tubal surgery such as a tubal ligation will also put her at high risk. Chlamydial infection causes tubal scarring via intraluminal inflammation and subsequent fibrin deposition. If a patient has had three episodes of pelvic inflammatory disease, her ratio of ectopic pregnancy to intrauterine pregnancy is 1 to 3. Smoking is also a risk factor because it slows the cilia in the fallopian tube. Don't forget, however, that 50% of patients with ectopic pregnancy will not have any risk factors. The diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy involves a high index of suspicion. The classic symptoms associated with ectopic pregnancy are amenorrhea, vaginal bleeding, and abdominal pain. Diagnostic testing involves serum beta-HCG measurements and transvaginal ultrasound. Serial beta-HCG measurements are made at 48-hour intervals to help determine if this is a viable intrauterine pregnancy or a non-viable uterine or ectopic pregnancy. The beta-HCG should increase by at least 50% over a 48-hour interval. When the beta-HCG is above approximately 1,500 to 2,000, an intrauterine pregnancy should be seen on transvaginal ultrasound. Treatment for an ectopic pregnancy is either medical with methotrexate or surgical with either a salpingostomy or a salpingectomy, usually performed laparoscopically. Medical management with methotrexate can be used if it is safe and there is a high chance for success. The absolute contraindications to methotrexate address this safety issue, and these are hemodynamic instability, liver or kidney abnormalities, active lung disease, breastfeeding, and inability to comply with the required follow-up beta-HCG testing. If the methotrexate therapy is not going to be successful and she still ultimately needs surgery, then she is likely not the best candidate, so relative contraindications include fetal cardiac activity, high beta-HCG level, and a large ectopic pregnancy size greater than 3.5 centimeters. There are two main options for surgical management of an ectopic pregnancy. A salpingectomy involves removal of the entire fallopian tube. There is no need for beta-HCG follow-up since the entire pregnancy is removed with the fallopian tube. The other surgical option is a salpingostomy. A small hole is made in the fallopian tube and the pregnancy is removed. Beta-HCG levels have to be followed after a salpingostomy to ensure that the entire ectopic pregnancy has been removed. This concludes the APCO video on ectopic pregnancy. We have discussed the differential diagnosis of vaginal bleeding and abdominal pain in the first trimester, ectopic pregnancy risk factors, and diagnosis and treatment. Remember to always have a high index of suspicion in women presenting with vaginal bleeding and abdominal pain in the first trimester. Mm -hmm.